I go, you got a mustache? <laughs> I go, you got a mustache? <laughs> Captains and coaches, we spend about maybe February all the way till September, and then we kind of get some time off. So this this moment, as we um, finish the season after Labor Day, we we head on into um, a rest, and we, we we get to family time, and and players are going back to school, to college, to high school, back to work, or grinding with um, family, and whatnot. You know, I think um, as we take some time off, we might bring back meetings, gatherings, little things like that, just to keep guys intact and keep the fellowship and keep growing together as a whole. I think we got a lot of mixture of young and old guys that, you know, we got to continue to build the culture and learn more about each other. It's such a long season that we just want to make sure that guys um, stay fresh, hungry, but at the same time, as they all go, we try to encourage one another to continue to work out, continue to build and build themselves as a whole. Be ready as an individual first in order for us to be successful because the season's gonna be very long. So we wanna make sure that we fulfill all the needs we need to and, and we do what we need to do outside of the game. Hey, Z, drop back a little bit. Right there. Football has always been a big part of me. I love football. Um, there was one chance in time where all I wanted to do was go pro. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there was a point in time where all I wanted to do was go pro for football. And uh, I was this close. <laughs> I was this close, and uh, of course the knee happened, and um, uh, you know I, I, um, I thought, hey, you know what? Maybe if I just really get into boxing and get the hands right again, uh, I could come back, I come back with upgraded hands, you know, and that's what I did for the past two, two years, just trying to live, just trying to live on that football dream again um, using the upgraded hands you know seeing if it worked and it did I I love it I still love it today it's just now um, you know as I get better at boxing of course um, my dad always told me you know when I was in high school of course too he said you gotta do football or you gotta do swimming 
It's got to be one or the other because if you don't, you're not going to be as good. And so I actually dropped football for swimming and became that section final freaking Hmong swimmer and whatnot, you know? Well, now that the hands are upgraded, I can't really go back to being pro anymore. It's just, it takes too much, too strong. The guys are getting stronger and younger. So um, the knee, the knee can just take one little thing and then boom, you're done, you know? So I think um, this year was definitely the last year for me because although we were this close for pro football, we're this close for pro boxing. So you'll see me out there on the TV, you know, spanking dudes or whatnot instead of uh, tackling guys. But, um, you know, the love for football is still there. I'm pretty much a technical person, so I'll be very technical in your ear too. So you got I, I see you and I, I want the best for anyone, you know. So um, I started finding our, started um, hungering for that taste instead. Um, the taste of bettering someone. I think I have boxing to thank for that as well because I might be able to transfer that over in the football world. Get your hands right, upgrade your hands, and uh, get you to be the best D-line you can be. As I become more intact in the boxing world, training people, training myself, I'm gonna have to take more time away from football, of course, now, you know, so um, this is this is it from here, you know. I gotta go, I gotta go put in some more work, and um, it's hard to say goodbye to such, such awesome people, but you guys keep bringing me back, so it's not the last of me yet. I consider myself as a helper. I can't say enjoy, but I thrive or uh, I feel accomplished when I can help someone out. Not just football, but I have a good amount of resources that I have that I can like, you know, pair people up with to, to do things. And like my wife is a real estate agent. So if you look for a house, you know, my wife can be a real estate agent. Um, if um, it comes down to football, once again, like, hey coach, uh, uh, I've been really wanting to learn about receiver or corner or linebacker stuff. Can you have some time? I have no problem. I mean, I got this little one, but I bring it along if I have to. Um, or if you, if, you, if, if you have personal advice, like coach, um, my girl or guy is, we, we, we've been arguing for two days. What, what do you think that I should do? I, I can give you my two cents, not say you should listen to my two cents, but I'm willing to help so you make your life a little bit easier. That was done for me. I gotta pay it, pay it forward. Um, I would say that I would, at the, the end, quote unquote, at the end of my life, not to make this a sad story, end of my life, um, um, so my uncle always asked me, at the end of your life, what would you want people to say about you at your funeral, right? Um, you can always people always say, "Oh, he was a great football player and all the other stuff." That really wasn't what you've done. That was what you gave people to watch, like as, entertainment wise. Um, but for me, I would enjoy if someone said, "You know, H Coach HB or HB, whenever you ever needed him, he will always he was always there." That's that's like for me, it's like the best thing ever because. I, I don't have a ton of time, but I will try to make you my priority when I have it. So it could be in the middle of the night if I'm up and you're like, hey, Coach HB, I really need you right now. That for just for you to think of me at a time of need means a lot because you trust me. You think I'm reliable. You think I can um, set you on the right path in which that's a lot of people have done that for me because coming out of Miami, it's a lot of it's it's easy to do bad in Miami. It's uh, my grandma always always said, uh, easy to get in trouble, hard to get out. So 
Uh, I had a lot of good family members and friends and coaches that set me up in the right path. So if I could pay that, pave that for it, by all means, I would do that just because I want everybody to succeed. Um, even, to, especially for witness, because I see uh, um, y'all, especially witness, y'all come out a lot as of your Sunday practices and your Wednesday walkthroughs for games and a lot of other players, they just literally just show up and have fun. So a lot of times y'all sacrifices, y'all sacrifice to come out. And for me to help out when I can, I would do that hand over fist. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what yeah. I would enjoy. Is whenever you need me, just let me know. And if I can give back, I will. No questions asked. You want to say something? <laughs> This year, the 2023 season, is definitely one that I'll always remember. Um, of course, the outcome, um, the final results wasn't what we all hoped for or expected. Um, you know, a lot of excitement going in, um, but I knew personally that there was going to be some growing pains, um, but um, I'm really encouraged and I am looking forward to the future more because of this year. And so we had a good showing, uh, of course, a lot of new players, you know, different position on both sides of the ball. Um, and so I think we know where we could be. And so that is where uh, maybe the disappointment lies within the 2022 season. But uh, I'm encouraged in terms of just um, with the people that we do have um, that's um, still around, that still believes in this culture and what we're trying to build and, and do. Uh, inside these walls here at Witness Football. Um, not what others outside these walls think or, or see how this season went, but what we see and are looking forward to the future. As I've said before, football is what we do. It's, it's not who we are. We are made up of just not players, but um, of people. Uh, is this is family, right? Of all different walk of lives, um, uh, you know, even different uh, race and everything. Um, and so football is what brings us together, but outside of this, um, once it's done, uh, we're all fathers, um, you know, some even uh, pastors, students, uh, professionals uh, elsewhere. And so um, in the off season, it's just a good time to uh, go back uh, and um, unwind and um, relax and, and knowing that you know, football is just what we do, but it's not everything, but also find time for each other. 2023 was a learning experience. I started off the year making a quarterback change. Mike's been great for us for five years and his time with us as a leader. And we continue to embrace him as a, a person who embarked witness culture and witness as a whole. In season, we knew that we weren't going to get as much time because of the snow and different opportunities. So going into league play, start off very slow we have a lot of talent a lot of skills but just couldn't get enough practices in before because of the snow and different uh, obstacles that we've had prior i like to have maybe six to eight practices before we play our first league game we probably got maybe four we came in league play i think we 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 fought hard we went to the finals and, and had a tough loss and then going into memorial day i think that we had a lot of things in, in sight i think that um, the biggest is that we lost track sometimes of the game and the game management. The refs got into our heads and different things, and, and that really, really changed the dynamic of who we were and who we're not. 
And I think that as we embark and see past that, that we, we did a terrible, terrible job competing. In my opinion, as a coach, I think that we didn't execute to our full potential. We allow the other teams to dictate the, and control the game, uh, which put us in a tight situation and who and changed the dynamic of who we were. Coming into uh, Eau Claire, we needed one more tournament for J4. We needed one more opportunity. And so we, we pushed we pushed the, the envelope and uh, we made it to Eau Claire. And as we went to Eau Claire, we had a great outing. We had a great performance from all over, all our guys. And we've been working hard, we've been practicing hard, and we knew who we were, we knew who we can be. We came out, we, we put up a lot of points, we put up a lot of opportunities for high school kids. It wasn't just no easy feat of beating these teams, but I think, uh, I think we were focused. We got our head on straight and we were able to compete at our level and play the way we wanted to dictate and play. Coming into J4th, I believe we were ready, we were prepped. I believe that we were better as a team and as a unit. Unfortunately, it didn't go the way we anticipated to go. And as we embarked, we took some time off. We had a graduation party for all the graduates of um, middle school, high school, and college to celebrate together as a whole. And then came in, started prepping for WASA. WASA was kind of like our big last tournament be before everybody leaves back to school, back to college. So we really, really focused, emphasis, a lot of practice, trying to get into ourselves ready for WASA. We won both our games on day one. Coming to day two, we were number two seed. We won our first game, second game. I think it was a hard fought game. We had a lot of miscues and missed opportunities. We missed a lot of opportunities at the goal line. Um, we just had to learn how to finish. We got to learn how to play better in, in the goal line situation. Buckle up and toughen up a little bit. And then coming to Labor Day, it was tough and it was challenging for our team. As guys left, our team diminished a little bit. And so we had to pick up wherever we left off. I had to step in a lot of opportunities to practice with the guys on the field instead of just coaching. But we're able to focus, buckle everyone up and Labor day always mindset is to win but I knew that coming in was gonna be a challenge which why myself we believe it was gonna be a challenge because we didn't know who was gonna come quarterback was playing school ball we weren't sure if he was gonna be able to play with us some of our key players were were busy with family life and so we had a tough tough outing we end up battling through and we end up getting the number two seed overall unfortunately things didn't go our way and BV got the best of us and BV ended up going and winning the championship so great for BV Overall, the season for me, uh, in a nutshell, would be, I think we gotta find our identity again. Um, as we're young, as we're growing, we got a lot going on in our own personal life and in football and stuff like that, but we got a lot of guys with a lot of experience coming into 2024. 2023 was kind of a new era with a new quarterback. Great leaders that led us through to today, Mike and Johnny and Mason and Chewy and all those guys throughout the last five, six, seven, eight years. 2024 the expectation is you know to win and the expectation is to be first the expectation is to know that we have an identity the expectation is that our identity will pull through and we don't lose sight of who we are so i'm excited for 2024 hope you guys are too and stay tuned as we continue to embark this journey as as a team and as a community uh, Monk flag football is alive and well and i'm excited uh, for witness to be part of 2024 as well Thank you.